I will be storing the data permanently in a storage called file. So if I specify R as my mode, I will be trying to open the file in the read mode. The function f put c writes the character value of the argument c. If you want to read the integer, you will be using the get w. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the beautiful chapter that's going to be files. Why do we need files? Sir, we need to keep our documents, we need to keep our records, we need to keep our grade sheets, we need to keep our mark sheets. So for all those things, we need files. Yes. Guys, I'm not talking about that file. I'm talking about the file which will help me to store all my data in one place it should be of type electronic data yes so how do we handle this file in c programming is what i will be discussing with all of you guys so what is that i have in this session so let me check that i will be discussing what exactly the file is all about and then followed by different types of files that i have how do I create the file and also I have some modes when I'm opening a file okay which mode are you opening so I will be discussing about that different modes so along with that I will also show you formatted and unformatted input output operations including that I will also discuss some of the random files random file functions let's get into the session without wasting much of your time so first of all what exactly the file is all listen to me carefully the first point goes like this file represents the sequence of bytes i have a file in that i will be storing the sequence of bytes one by one so that does not matter if it is a text file or a binary file mainly i have two different files that's what you need to remember so what is that the first one is a text file the second one is a binary file my dear students when it comes to the text file i will be storing all my text data when it comes to the binary file i will be storing the binary data when it comes to the binary data sir why do we have two different files text files and a binary file can't you have only one let me tell you the advantage of this yes we have the text file because we are able to read only the data which is in the format of text correct yes but when we have the content in the binary format, are we able to read the data? No. But though we are not able to read the data, why do we have that? We have the binary files because it is most fastest than the text files. I will have the data in the binary file, like you know how I will have the data in the memory. So that is the advantage that I have. So binary files are most fastest than the text file. So that's what you need to remember. So fine. So what is the next one? Next point that I have. The next point that I have is a file is a permanent storage medium. So whatever the data that I have. So please underline this and understand. I will be storing the data permanently in a storage called file. So fine. That is the second point that you need to remember. A file is a place on the disk where I store a group of related data. I will not be storing the data whatever I want in the file. But I will be storing of course the data which is related. Say for example, I need to store the data which is related to the student. I need to enter the student record. Yes, of course, that doesn't mean that I have to include the student's girlfriend information. Right, so that's an important point that I need to remember. If I'm storing the data, I should store the related data inside the file is what you need to understand at this point of time. So hope you got the basic understanding or basic knowledge with respect to the file. Moving forward to the next one, defining and opening of L. If I want to define and if I want to open a file, I have to follow some of the important things. So I will call that as a, Sir, please make a note. This is very important. If I want to open the file, I have to follow some of the things. So that could be the first one. That is a file name. The second one, data structure. And the third one, purpose. Why are you opening it? So this is the three important things that is required for the operating system to open a file. So this is a mandatory thing that you have to give. All right. So fine. Sir, what is this file name? Let me discuss this one by one. What is this file name? Why should I have this file name 
I need to uniquely identify the file, uh, right? So that's why I need the file name, my dear students. Whenever you are giving the name for the file, make sure that the name will speak on behalf of the file, what exactly the data that you have stored in the file. So that's a most important point that you need to remember. So fine, how do I open the file? When I want to open the file, keep one thing in your mind. I will be using the function called open. What is the function that I use? I will be using the function called open. So this function will help me to open the file. So fine, sir, we understood. So this is the function which will help me to open the file. So this function takes two parameter. Sir, what is the two parameter it takes? The first parameter that it takes is a file name and the second parameter that it takes is a mode. In which mode are you trying to open the file? Yes, we all know that imagine the normal file. So before you start performing any operation on the file, so what is the first thing that you do? You are trying to open the file, right? So that's what you need to remember. So for what purpose that you are trying to open, whether you read or write or do the modifications, whatever you want so you have to specific you have to specify for what purpose that you are opening in the mode so that's a important thing that you need to specify so fine you understood that we have the function that is f open so f open will help me so f open remember i have told you open function right so since we are doing or we are dealing with the files so we are using the file open function and you all know that we have two things one is file name as well as the mode so we have to specify the file name as well as the mode is what you need to remember if you want to open the file so that's what you need to understand moving forward so guys i have listed out some of the modes sir you spoke about the modes what are the different modes that i can open the file let me introduce some of the different modes that i have with respect to the files so that's the first one that i have is r so if i specify r as my mode i will be trying to open the file in the read mode suppose if i specify in a write that is w w in the sense you are trying to open the file in a write mode and if you specify it as a so what is the meaning of a a is a special type of mode that i have which will help me to append the content so what is the meaning of append the content you need to understand one thing when i say append the content you uh, your cursor whatever the cursor that you have file pointer the cursor so that will come to the last end part of the content what you have in the file so that you can start adding the content at the end of the file that's what you need to remember but when it uh, is in the right mode so please observe with respect to the right mode what happens with the right mode say for example you're trying to open the file which is not there what happens at that time if you don't have the file automatically that file will be created that's what you need to understand suppose i'm trying to open the file which is already there in the right mode what happens sir so you will be able to open the file but the content will be erased that's what you need to remember right moving forward to the next mode that i have i have r plus r plus in the sense read plus guys you if you open uh, in this mode okay so you will be able to read you will be able to perform both read as well as write and w plus i think you know the same thing you'll be able to write as well as you will be able to read if you open in the a plus you'll be able to perform so guys please listen to me carefully open the text file for reading as well as writing both at the end that's what you need to remember it creates a file if it does not exist so please understand so i have already told you and the reading will start from the beginning but writing can only be happen at the end so that's what you need to remember if i use append plus i repeat my statement i want all of you to please listen here reading will happen from the beginning but when you want to write you will be able to write the content at the end of the file as what you should never forget at this point of time is what i would like to tell you right so this is the different modes that we have and it's going to be very important with respect to your exam point of view so please make a note of it so moving forward to the next one that i have when you perform all the operation to the file whatever you have opened and make sure you have to close that file so before you exit from that operation it is very important it is mandatory that all of you should take care of 
closing the file then how do i close the file once i'm done with everything so please remember i will be using the function called f close and you have to pass the file pointer that's what you need to remember so guys sir what is this file pointer you did not speak about it so guys remember here so this p1 is what i will call it as a file pointer this file pointer will be pointing to your file board wherever you have created so in the memory that's what you need to remember all right so moving forward to the next one so you understood how to close the next function that we have is all about guys remember how do i read and how do i you know write the data into the file so for this i have some of the functions predefined functions which i will be discussing with all of you so what exactly that functions that i have so please remember i will be introducing you all to the first function that is put c whenever i use put c so guys i will be using this function f put c to write the content so guys that's what you need to remember but at only one character at a time so that's what you need to understand with respect to this function so let me uh, discuss this in detail with all of you now so guys the function f put c writes the character value of the argument c so please understand so whatever the argument that i have here so argument c this content will be written so that where where exactly we are writing that content so please observe to the output stream refer to the file pointer where exactly it is showing to the file pointer output stream so here to that content i will be printing whatever the content that i have in the c argument that's what you need to remember so guys basically come on everybody recollect why do i use put c f put c will help me to write one single character to the output stream is what you need to remember here same thing happens with the character also so guys moving forward uh, to the next function get c is opposite to the put c so if i'm writing the content to the output stream so i will be reading the content from the input stream with the help of the get c so when it comes to the get c here also it's very important that you need to remember i will be able to read one single character at a time so that's what you need to understand here so please observe so guys i have the function f get c and also i will be having the file pointer that's what you need to understand at this point of time why do i use this get c i will be using this get c to read one single character is what you need to remember so fine moving forward to the next one and this is also one of the example that you need to remember so which will help me to read the string okay which will help you to read the string i have the character buffer int and file pointer so this is what you need to remember moving forward to the next functions that i have so guys uh you need to observe there i was discussing get c and i was discussing put c but here there is one letter difference so that is get w and put w when it comes to w you need to understand that i am dealing with respect to the integer but when it comes to the c you need to understand i am reading the character there but here i am dealing with respect to the integer if you want to read the integer you will be using the get w all right and if you want to write the integer you will be using the put w this is what you need to remember with respect to get w and put w and this is the syntax that we have if you want to read the integer okay so here is a file pointer if you want to write the integer guys this is the syntax that you need to use for a put w and what is that we have we have uh, integer and we have the file pointer here that's the two parameter that this function takes and when we have the get w so please understand i'm passing the file handler so guys get w will help me to read the content to that particular file pointer is what you need to remember this is what you need to understand with respect to get w and put w so put w will help me to write the integer get w will help me to read the integer as what you need to remember so now i have uh, f print f and f scan f so uh, formatted and unformatted uh, input output operations guys it works exactly same almost same like you know printf and uh, scanf but this is with respect to the files so same thing so i will be using the f printf to print the content and f scanf to read the content okay so read the content and save it in the file so that's what i'm trying to do it in the scanf but when it comes to the f printf 
I will be trying to print the content of the file. So that's what you need to remember. So same thing that we have, I have to mention the file pointer and whatever the content that you wanted to print within the double quotes, you can specify it here. And the content is from the variable list is what you need to remember. But when I'm reading the content to the file, so what is the syntax that I have to follow? Same thing, file pointer is what you have to mention. Then followed by how many values that you are reading. So you all know that if you are reading the string, so you will specify yes with a no, percentage. You all know, right? We have the integer. One more value that I'm trying to read is integer. So the, whatever the string that I'm trying to read, so please observe, I will be storing that in this variable and whatever the integer that I'm trying to read, I will be storing that in the quantity. That's what you need to remember. And this is the syntax for F scanf. I think you guys have uh, been masters in this by now. This is the you know, almost the last chapter. By now you would have used this n number of times, right? So fine. Moving forward to the very important part of the session. So you have to understand some of the predefined functions which helps us to perform some of the operations with respect to the file. So I will be introducing all of you to these three functions. The first one that I have here is fseek and the second one that I have is ftel and rewind. What exactly this fseek, rewind, ftel is all about? So why do we need this fseek? Let's check. Guys, I have this fseek function. This is used to move the file position to a desired location. Say for example, my file pointer, this is the file, okay, this is the file, imagine this pen is a file, I want this pen to move to the desired location, Let say for example, to the end of the line. So this is the advantage that I have with respect to the yfseek and this is the syntax. That's what you need to remember. You have to specify the file pointer, offset and the position to move your file pointer to a desired location. So this is the advantage that you have with respect to the file, see. Then what is the next one that we have? When it comes to the ftel, so guys, ftel will tell you the current position of a file pointer. Guys, where exactly your file pointer is there, okay? That position, if you wanna know, so you will be able to use the ftel function. So by passing the file pointer variable inside the function, the parameter, so this function will give you the current location and it will be stored in this variable is what you should know. And the last function that I have here is rewind. So rewind will help me to read the content n number of times of that particular file without closing it. So that is the advantage that we have. So don't forget that. And this is the syntax for me, rewind, and you will pass the file pointer inside this. So hope you have understood the basic concepts of file okay so guys with this i have come to an end of the session thank you bye bye take care